third time might be a charm, but a fourth entry is just pushing it when it comes to some film series. Look, Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines can't touch the toes of its predecessors, but it at least tries to tell a follow-up story that many fans had pondered after the conclusion of Terminator 2 Judgment Day. The critics agreed, with the general consensus being it wasn't the best film in the franchise, but it was decent. Hence the 70% critical approval on Rotten Tomatoes. Then, Terminator Salvation arrived in 2009. It boasts an all-star cast featuring Christian Bale as John Connor and Sam Worthington as the cyborg Marcus Wright. The film covers the origin of the T-800 and how the unstoppable Terminator came to be. Unfortunately, it also has the distinction of being a Terminator film without Arnold Schwarzenegger, which is basically the equivalent of a Batman movie without the Dark Knight. Fans weren't exactly thrilled that Schwarzenegger's likeness was utilized, but he failed to make an actual appearance here. Even though this was the first Terminator film to truly take the action to the dystopian sci-fi future that everyone feared, there was a massive disconnect between this installment, the audience, and critics. This soft reboot of the franchise was a monumental flop, receiving only 33% critical approval on Rotten Tomatoes, and making around $372 million at the box office from a $200 million budget. People can say what they want about the first three Transformers films, but they were pure money, making over $2.6 billion at the global box office. That said, diehard fans of the animated series and popular toys always wanted the story to shift away from the human characters to focus more on the bots and Cybertron's rich lore. When it was clear that Shia LaBeouf wasn't returning for Transformers Age of Extinction, and trailers showed off the Dinobots in action, the audience had their fingers crossed that the fourth movie might be something different. In the end, Transformers Age of Extinction is essentially the same formula from before, with new human characters replacing the previous archetypes. The story beats were the same. The slow motion scenes were the same. Heck, even the love story was the same. If this film was made in 2023, it would feel as if someone asked ChatGPT to make a Transformers film in the style of Michael Bay. Despite the cookie cutter approach, Age of Extinction made over a billion dollars at the box office. But it also received the lowest critical and audience scores on Rotten Tomatoes until the follow up The Last Night. Eventually, the franchise was rebooted with 2018's Bumblebee. That's a whole other can of worms. There's a million stories I could tell you. Superman 4 The Quest for Peace is a study of how a singular film can destroy one of the most popular franchises in the world. By the time this movie entered production, there wasn't really a demand for it. Superman 3 had seen a drop in its earnings and critical reception, indicating it might have been a good time to wrap up the story as a trilogy. However, the Canon group secured the rights to Superman and convinced Christopher Reeve to return as the Man of Steel for another feature in which he had story input. Speaking about working with Canon to the Los Angeles Times, Reeve said, They're like the guy who flies tourists and wants first class service. I admire their recklessness in buying into Superman, though they do like to nickel and dime you on paper clips. But for the most part, we're getting what we want. Famously, Superman 4 experienced a tumultuous production featuring budget cuts, cheap effects, and entire scenes of the movie being trimmed to keep down the costs. Mark Pillow, who played Nuclear Man, explained to Yahoo how most of his scenes were cut and how he had a feeling all was not well. In the end, the film was ravaged by fans and critics, sentencing any potential Superman film to the Phantom Zone for almost two decades. Home Alone 3 had the smarts to change characters when it realized Macaulay Culkin took a break from acting, and there was no chance this feature would lure him out of retirement. Was it as good as the previous entries in the film series? No, but it executes a similar premise under an original guise, and fans accepted it for what it was. The made-for-TV Home Alone 4 Taking Back the House thought it could capitalize on the original series' popularity in return to the adventures of Kevin McAllister and one of his main foes, Marv, in a new flick. Unfortunately, it recast both roles, as Mike Weinberg and French Stewart replaced Culkin and Daniel Stern respectively. Naturally, fans were having none of it and rejected the film out of principle. What is even more insulting is how Home Alone 4 tries to recreate the exact same gags from the first two movies. Despite the negative reaction and general disinterest in this movie, it didn't stop filmmakers from soldiering on and making further uninspired sequels. Keep the change, you filthy animal. The Matrix has always been a peculiar franchise in the sense that everyone loved the first film, but the sequels weren't as universally beloved upon release. They weren't hated, but one would struggle to find someone who listed The Matrix Reloaded or The Matrix Revolutions as their favorite in the film series. Nonetheless, they stood the test of time, and most fans tend to look back on them more fondly now since they wrapped up the story of Neo. Considering the conclusive nature of the trilogy, eyebrows were raised when it was announced a fourth movie had entered production and would see the return of Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss. There were questions, but of course fans would tune in to see what The Matrix Resurrections was all about. What followed was one of the most divisive responses to a Matrix film yet. While the critics gave it 63% critical approval on Rotten Tomatoes, 
audience members were left confused by what they had seen. The film plays like a meta commentary on the previous films, while it seemingly brings back these characters for no good reason other than to continue the story. Resurrections also bombed at the box office, only making $157 million from a $190 million budget. That said, there's a caveat in the sense that the world was only emerging from the coronavirus pandemic's haze, and Warner Brothers' model of dropping cinema releases on HBO Max on the same day didn't help box office numbers. Indisputably, Jack Sparrow is the most iconic character from the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. However, the operative word is pirates here. A large part of the franchise's success to that point had come due to the supporting performances from Will Turner and Elizabeth Swann. While Captain Jack might have been the main face on the poster and the character with the best lines, Will and Elizabeth were the heartbeat of the story and brought steadiness to the wild adventures. The fourth movie, On Stranger Tides, didn't feature either of them. In fact, the two actors declined to return for the movie. Speaking to The Independent, Kiara Knightley said, I said when I finished the trilogy that that was going to be it. I had a wonderful time on it, and I met some extraordinary people, but, you know, I think, for me, three is enough. Definitely. While On Stranger Tides did feature other returning characters such as Captain Barbosa, it simply lacks the gusto and appeal of the previous films. The new cast members didn't possess the chemistry of Will and Elizabeth, and their absence was sorely felt here. I hate you. By the time Shrek the Third released, DreamWorks was pushing it. How many times can an unfriendly ogre, his talking donkey friend, and other fairy tale characters make us laugh until our insides hurt? Well, the studio had the last laugh, as the movie made over $800 million at the global box office. Regardless of what anyone thought of Shrek and its longevity as a franchise, the families turned up in numbers to watch the movies. As revealed by the screenwriter, the original plan for Shrek was to end it after five films. Though this changed while the team made Shrek Forever After, believing it would end the series on a more conclusive note. While the fourth movie did introduce new characters and different ogres, it was clear the series was on its last legs and stumbling around aimlessly. The jokes and premises are repetitive, and the movie never feels like it will surprise the audience in a positive way. All things considered, it seemed like a wise choice to end the film series there. However, nothing is ever sacred in Hollywood, and there have been talks of more Shrek films in the future. Tim Burton redefined the possibilities of comic book movies with the release of 1989's Batman. He showed how these superhero films could be more than kid-friendly fodder. However, it was the same devil-may-care attitude that resulted in him getting the sack and being replaced by Joel Schumacher for Batman Forever, after his dark aesthetic in Batman Returns failed to sell toys. While it's generally accepted that Batman Forever isn't as good as its predecessors, the audiences still had fun with it, and it raked in over $330 million at the box office. Expectedly, Schumacher was given the keys to the Batcave for the sequel, Batman and Robin. The drama began when Val Kilmer decided he didn't want to be Batman anymore, and departed the project, leaving the door open for George Clooney to slip into the cape and cowl. However, the biggest issue was not the change in actors. Instead, it was studio interference. After the financial success of Batman Forever, the toy companies and other partners were interested in making as much merchandise as possible out of the film. This impacted the actual quality, as it feels like one giant commercial. The fans and critics saw right through it, and everyone lambasted Batman and Robin. It also killed any potential Batman movies for eight years. This is why Superman works alone. The Karate Kid franchise was built on the chemistry and friendship of Daniel LaRusso and Mr. Miyagi. Even though Mr. Miyagi is no longer part of the story in the current era due to the passing of the actor, his influence and invaluable lessons can be felt in Cobra Kai as well. The first three Karate Kid movies established and solidified this bond, as Daniel and Mr. Miyagi helped each other in their own unique way. Then, a fourth film titled The Next Karate Kid arrived in 1994 without Daniel. Writing in his autobiography, Waxing On, The Karate Kid and Me, actor Ralph Macchio revealed he was never asked to return for the film. In fact, he found out the movie was happening after reading about it in the paper. In The Next Karate Kid, Daniel is replaced by Julie Pierce, played by Hilary Swank as the new lead. Much like the story before, Mr. Miyagi takes Julie under his wing and teaches her karate. However, the audience and critics didn't exactly take to this change in a positive manner, blasting the derivative formula. While Swank's performance was praised, the film stinks up the franchise on Rotten Tomatoes with a 7% critical approval rating and 24% audience score. Instead of releasing X-Men 4, 20th Century Fox chose to focus on a prequel of the franchise's most popular character, Wolverine. The template for the story was already there, in the form of the comic book miniseries Origin. All the film would have to do is lift from the source material and adapt it to the big screen and throw in Wolverine. While X-Men Origins Wolverine takes influence from the comics, it also veers off down a tangent that didn't leave many viewers happy. For one, the decision to make Sabretooth and Wolverine Brothers feels too much like a soap opera twist. 
Second, Gambit is introduced in the film, but he doesn't play nearly enough of a major role. And finally, there's Deadpool. By refusing to give the Merc with a mouth a costume and stitching his lips shut, it takes away everything that made the character popular to begin with. In the years since then, Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool movies have poked fun at how the character was treated in this adaptation. There had been plans for a Magneto origin film in the same vein as X-Men Origins Wolverine. However, the lukewarm reception towards the film and average box office performance put a pin in the idea. What are you doing? As an action horror franchise, Underworld strikes a fine balance between the frights and thrilling spectacle. The third movie, Rise of the Lycans, acts as a prequel, and only features the series' lead, Kate Beckinsale, and a cameo at the end. After having the missing story blanks filled, fans were excited to see Beckinsale return in full force as Selene for 2012's Underworld Awakening. Yet, all the excitement, frenetic energy, and originality from before had been depleted by the time the fourth movie arrived. Critics give it a shallow 25% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes, and many were left questioning what was the point of continuing the story if it was going to be bland. Another sequel, Underworld Blood Wars, dropped in 2016, but even that couldn't give the film series the bite it needed to get back on track to its glory days.